The committee voted along party lines, you've heard that before, to ask the House to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Republicans are accusing him of failing to limit immigration at the southern border, but there is little, if any, evidence that Mayorkas broke any laws. And while House Republicans were working to impeach him over immigration, they were also saying they would block a bipartisan deal to help fix the issue. Scott McFarland is on Capitol Hill for us, following all of it. Scott, good morning. Tony, good morning. The issue of border security is now clearly tied up in campaign politics. And last night's marathon debate only further exposed the divide. Thousands of miles from the southern border where the Biden administration is grappling with thousands of illegal migrant crossings a day, House Republicans set their sights on the nation's Homeland Security Secretary. Secretary Mayorkas has put his political preferences above following the law. After an all-day hearing that went into the night, the Republican-led House Homeland Security Committee approved two articles of impeachment against Alejandro Mayorkas. I bet our founding fathers are just rolling over in their graves. Claiming he willfully failed to follow immigration law without producing evidence. It's clear uh, he's not done his job. He's been derelict in his duties. He's violated his oath of office. Democrats blasted the hearing as partisan gamesmanship in an election year. The House Republicans are doing everything they can at Donald Trump's direction to sabotage any legislation because you don't want solutions, you just want politics. Is this really a high crime and misdemeanor? Yeah, absolutely. You've got a cabinet secretary who is totally disregarding the laws passed by Congress. Mayorkas is also a key negotiator in Senate talks to overhaul U.S. border security laws. But on Tuesday, Republican Speaker Mike Johnson reiterated it may be dead on arrival in the House. What's been suggested is in this bill is not enough to secure the border. Even if this impeachment vote goes to the U.S. House and passes, this effort is going to be knocked down by the Democratic-controlled U.S. Senate, which will prevent Mayorkas from being the first cabinet secretary removed from office since the 1800s, Tony. That's a long time ago, Scott. You know, we know voters rank immigration as one of their top issues. I've heard it. Our pollsters have heard that. And it's especially true among Republican voters, which may, might make you think the House GOP has an incentive to work with the Senate on an immigration bill, but it doesn't seem to be working out that way. How so? And Tony, it's really striking how immigration has become a dominant issue here, and Senate negotiators have been trying to cobble together this big deal to give the president more power to stem a migrant crisis, but they can't quite get there can't quite get it on paper, and now there's this wall of opposition forming. Donald Trump says he doesn't want a deal. He wants to campaign on the issue, and he has some devoted loyalists in the House who can block it from becoming law. All right. Thanks for the political lesson, Scott. Thank you. We begin with a dramatic moment on Capitol Hill at a hearing about keeping kids safe online. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg stood up and apologized directly to families affected by tragedies connected to social media. It happened during a hearing where five major tech CEOs faced tough questions from senators and accusations that they put profit over safety. Jolene Kent witnessed all of this firsthand and spoke to the parents. Jolene, good morning. Nate, good morning. It was a real stunning moment to see Mark Zuckerberg standing up and forcing himself to face the parents of these children. Very distraught. The grief in the room was palpable. Now, the big question is what Congress will do next. These parents are hopeful but skeptical. Do you affirm the testimony you're about? The CEOs of Discord, Snap, TikTok, X, and Meta were called to Capitol Hill Wednesday. I know you don't mean to it to be so, but you have blood on your hands. In the room, yeah, scores of parents holding up photos of their children, some who they say died as a result of online sexual exploitation, bullying, and harassment. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg was pressured by Republican Senator Josh Hawley to face the grieving families. Have you compensated any of the victims? These girls, have you compensated them? I don't believe so. You, why not? Have you apologized to the victims? Would you like to do so now? Well, uh, show them the pictures. Would you like to apologize for what you've done to these good people? I, I, I'm sorry for everything that you've all through. It's terrible knowing that have to go through the things that your families have, have suffered. Watching in the audience, Shauna Pouch from Vermont. She's raising her 11-year-old granddaughter, who she says was sexually exploited on Snapchat, sending her into a mental health crisis. I just never thought 
that this kind of stuff would happen, and it did. If you had a chance to speak to the CEOs, what would you say to the CEO of Snapchat? Snapchat is my worst enemy. They need to step up and they need to make these platforms safe for children. I'm so sorry that we have not been able to prevent these tragedies. Did you or ever, and everyone else at Snap really fail to see that the platform was the perfect tool for sexual predators? Senator, that behavior is disgusting and reprehensible. Spiegel and ex-CEO Linda Yaccarino did express support for the Kids Online Safety Act, one of several bills that have been proposed. However, Congress has been unable to pass any meaningful legislation. It's been 28 years, what, since the Internet? We haven't passed any of these bills. And the reason they haven't passed is because of the power of your company. So let's be really, really clear about that. Mark, are you putting profits over kids' safety? How are you keeping kids safe online? Why Zuckerberg declined to take our questions. And Pouch says she wants the social media companies to do more. What's going through your head and your heart as you leave this hearing today? My head? I'm very frustrated with listening to these CEOs. How many more children do we need to lose in order for this to change? The open question now is what Congress will choose to do next. The ball is firmly in their court. The committee ended on a note and a commitment to pass a package of five bills. Senator Graham, the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, has vowed to me multiple times in our interviews and in person that he will bring reform to the Senate floor for a vote by this fall. But there's a lot of hurdles that have to be surmounted for that to actually happen. Tony. Yeah, that's what people are waiting for. Joe Ling, those senators channeling a lot of the anger and frustration that parents feel. Thank you very much. And, yeah. and this is a real talker. We've been talking about it all morning. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg says it's complicated, these safety questions for parents. It's not. The kids went on your app. Yep. They suffered, and there have to be consequences. Yeah. So far, they're not. Yeah, and we've highlighted so many stories where people have lost children. And it's a tough one. I think all of us up here as parents have said, we want our kids to have access. We want them to be like the other kids. So we know the dangers too, but there's so much going on behind the scenes that we can't control, but we feel like these companies can do more to protect. It seems like in most situations in America, we are held accountable and liable yeah. for things that happen, yeah. but these companies aren't. They're not. If we libeled Mark Zuckerberg right now, he could sue CBS and us. Yeah. But if someone posts that on his platform, they're not liable on the platform. They're just hosting it. Yeah. It's like a cork board in the park. Yeah. yeah. More to come on It's complicated. Meanwhile, President Biden travels to the key swing state of Michigan today, and he's got a lot of work to do there if he expects to win it again. He won back in 2020 there, but the political ground has shifted, and some of the groups that used to support him, well, they may now be up for grabs. Ed O'Keefe is at the White House. He's been following all this closely. Ed, good morning. Tony, good to see you. Michigan is set to play a crucial role this year, and its 15 electoral votes are very much in play. Polls continue to show former President Donald Trump with the advantage over Mr. Biden after Trump lost the state in 2020. Both candidates know winning support from union workers could be key in Michigan. Trump met Wednesday here in Washington with leaders of the Teamsters Union. And while they're unlikely to endorse him, Trump is hoping to make inroads with its rank and file. The current president is set to meet today with members of the United Auto Workers, which did endorse him last week, as you see there, after he stood with them on the picket line last year. But Mr. Biden also faces strong criticism and growing opposition from Michigan's sizable Arab American and Muslim American communities, who are becoming increasingly opposed to his continued support for the Israeli government and its war with Hamas as casualties continue to rise in Gaza. The president's been faced with protesters out on the road recently and at some of his speeches, and the fear of voters not turning out in Michigan is why he'll be rallying all the support he can today. Nate? Ed, we appreciate you. Where Iran's president is responding for the first time to America's threats of retaliation after the deaths of three U.S. service members in Jordan. Those soldiers will be honored in a dignified transfer ceremony today, and President Biden plans to be there. Ed O'Keefe is at the White House this morning tracking all of it for us. Ed, good morning to you. Good morning, Tony. Iran's president says it'll respond to anyone that bullies his country. And that solemn ceremony honoring those fallen American soldiers will be held this afternoon as the families are allowing it to be seen by the public. Speaking Thursday at the National Prayer Breakfast, President Biden paid tribute to the three soldiers killed in the Jordan attack. Sergeants William Rivers, Kennedy Sanders, and Brianna Moffat. They risked it all and will never forget the sacrifice and service to our country at the dozens of service members who were wounded and are recovering now. 
As for the U.S. response to the attack... It's time to, uh, to take away even more capability than we've taken in the past. U.S. officials tell CBS News that targets in Iraq and Syria have been approved, including against Iranian personnel and facilities in those countries. And Iran's president, Ibrahim Raisi, responded today, saying Iran won't start a war, but will respond strongly to anyone who bullies it. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says this time will be different from the retaliatory strikes launched in response to other recent attacks. They have a lot of capability. I have a lot more. Walking with a limp into the Pentagon briefing room, it was Austin's first meeting with reporters since his hospitalization in December. He also said he apologized directly to President Biden for keeping his fight with prostate cancer a secret. We did not handle this right. I did not handle this right. I should have told the president about my cancer diagnosis. I should have also told my team and the American public. And I take full responsibility. I apologize to my teammates and to the American people. As far as the status of Secretary Austin's health is concerned, he said he's still dealing with leg pain but is going to physical therapy and that doctors are confident he will continue to improve. Tony. You know, Ed, in other news tied to the region, President Biden issued this executive order yesterday sanctioning four Israelis. These are settlers, people who are living inside the lines of what could be a future Palestinian state seen as an obstacle to peace. What's it all about? Yeah, it means the U.S. can now sanction any settlers or anyone else who commits or threatens violence or destruction of property in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. In essence, it reiterates U.S. support for the so-called two-state solution or a separate Palestinian state. We should note the White House announced this new executive order on Thursday as the president was visiting Swing State, Michigan, home to a sizable population of Arab American and Muslim Americans upset with the president's continued support for the war that resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians. Tony. Show of seriousness, show of seriousness as well as the U.S. tries to broker these, this peace deal. Ed, thank you very much. The Democratic presidential primary campaign begins tomorrow in South Carolina for the first time ever. The vote may be important, an important test for the support of President Biden, especially with black voters who helped revive his campaign four years ago. Nicole Killian is talking with voters in Columbia, South Carolina. How are you doing today? Great, great. You guys are here to vote? Southern hospitality on full display as South Carolina hosts the first sanctioned Democratic primary in the country with early voting already underway. Thank you, South Carolina! In 2020, an endorsement from Congressman Jim Clyburn catapulted President Biden to frontrunner status. He swept the state, winning 48% of the vote in the primary and 60% of the black vote. I wouldn't be here without the Democratic voters of South Carolina, and that's a fact. The president and vice president have made multiple trips to the state to target black voters, but support may be softening. A recent CBS News poll shows 77 percent of black voters would back the president in a potential general election rematch with former President Trump, down 10 points from 2020. I want to talk about why it's so important that you get out and vote. At this Greenville church, Pastor Curtis Johnson is worried about a potential lack of enthusiasm. How concerned are you that people will sit this election out? I'm very concerned about it. I am concerned that so many of our community, and I understand feeling that some of the issues that are more relevant to us are not being addressed. We met with some members of his congregation who were split on their support, including independent voter Shannon Sloan. Who did you support in 2020? Joe Biden. Why not vote for him again? Well, I'm just trying to see if there's, does he have any new ideas? I was actually looking for something new, but I did support Biden. Does Joe Biden excite you? Honestly, no politician really excites me. I do like how Joe Biden is taking the country, and he doesn't get enough credit for it. To have two octatarians go and be our only candidates um, and consider them to be strong candidates is very difficult. I will be voting for Joe Biden. Um, not that I agree with everything that's taken place, but he is the better candidate. The Biden campaign says it doesn't take any voter for granted and has been making investments since last summer to reach voters of color. Today, Vice President Harris will be back here in South Carolina to meet with faith leaders and headline a campaign rally before tomorrow's primary. Jerika. All right, Nicole Killian, Force in South Carolina, thank you.